Were you ever in a position to not be able to join the Verkada ecosystem because your cameras were perhaps quite new and you wouldn't be able to have a budget to replace them and install Verkada cameras? You know, possibly you might have looked at command and be like, hey, this would be great to have like a nice global overview of you know, the sites I have, or possibly uh, considering access control, sensors, and you know, guest and thinking about wouldn't it be great to match my own existing cameras with it. Well, now you can with the addition of the command connector, a one rack unit server that will able to connect to your existing cameras as long as they have only profile S and basically bring them in within the Verkada ecosystem. Now, it's a bit more complicated than that because as opposed to a Verkada camera, this connector will not actually be able to give you everything that Verkada has to offer. And how could it? The whole reason that Verkada is so simple and plug and play, but at the same time increases the security of your physical infrastructure is because we architect everything end to end using our hybrid cloud architecture, right? So we get rid of all the servers, we get the cameras to automatically connect to the cloud, do their firmware updates and be accessible from everywhere. This is obviously not possible with a traditional on-premise system. The reason I wanted to re-emphasize this is that the command connector does not replace the existing Verkaba cameras. It only creates a temporary bridge that you can use in order to be part of the Verkada ecosystem. But in the long term, the plan would be to adopt Verkada cameras as your current state becomes either faulty or out of support. So what's the actual architecture? You're gonna put at least one command connector in each of your sites. And that command connector will connect to your cameras using Envoy Profile S. It will do so either automatically it can actually discover these cameras in the LAN or by you setting up IP addresses either one by one or via a CSV uplink. Once this synchronization happens, the connector will create an admin account on the camera and then it will instruct it at what bandwidth it should send both high and standard resolution video at. So all these cameras are gonna stream back to the command connector the command connector in itself has a hard drive and then it will store this data based on the same rules of adaptive quality recording by guaranteeing 30, 60 or 90 days of standard retention and keeping the high definition footage when motion is occurring, which is the most important part. As you see in, within the ordering page, there are multiple flavors of command connector and the main variation between them is the actual size of the drives. Each of them comes with four drives. They are in a RAID 10 array. So you'll have the best redundancy that you can get out of this type of system. Down the list, you'll see that all of them support the same type of configurations when it comes to days of onboard storage. They both support five megapixel or less or 4K. There is, by the way, no requirement to only have a certain type of camera. You can mix and match. The only thing that's different is the number of supported channels. So you'll be looking at how many cameras you have on a site and then decide which size of connector you need. From there, everything works like it would with a Verkada camera. The connector will again store its footages in adaptive quality. It will send hyperzooms to the cloud for further processing, for analytics. It will be able to do local and remote streaming as any other Verkada camera. And purely from a management point of view, it works exactly like a camera. Plug it into a, an outlet, give it an IP address via DHCP. It will automatically reach out to the cloud using HTTPS and then register to your organization, download its latest firmware and start operating. Sounds great. But remember, this is just a stopgap solution to allow you to get into the Verkada ecosystem. And the main reason for this is that, again, once you bring in third-party cameras, then there's a few things that we cannot do and a few things that we cannot support. First of all, although the connector has a five-year warranty, we're not able to support or help you with the third-party cameras you have. They might be faulty, they might not be on the right firmware. Well, our support team is more than happy to make sure that the connector is working as it should, 
But then for your cameras, you might need to go and speak to the other vendors. Another great point about using a Vercada solution is that we do all these firmware updates automatically for you. For us, we always made sure that these updates are done automatically. But as you can imagine, we are not able to touch or configure any other third-party cameras. When it comes to analytics, the command connector does uh, most of them. And the easiest way to think about this is that it will behave like a previous generation camera. So if you take something like a CB41 or a CB61, right, they did some analytics on themselves, but they mostly relied on the cloud for the advanced parts. Think about license plate recognition, right? A older generation bullet will crop the number plate and then send it into AWS for recognition. Now the new generation cameras have the latest Umbrella chipsets and that allowed us to do a lot of the processing on the cameras themselves, meaning faster operation, lower bandwidth, and easier for us to troubleshoot and be in control of that particular process. Now, as you can imagine, because we can't do this edge processing on a third party camera, we are kind of limited to what we do. So yes, we can still do things such as people and vehicle search, face search, even AI powered search as well. But when it comes to tracklet based processes such as line crossing, and loitering, those things were done due to those Umbrella chips and they will not be available on the command connector. Last thing to show you is just a very, very quick demo because everything looks and feels like a Vercada camera, right? You get the connector here, it is plugged in, working. You'll see the list of cameras and you'll be able to add cameras by using these three dots here. And then toggling onto the disk storage, you'll be able to see how much of the disk is allocated to what camera. So for example, this, I can tell you that's a 4K camera because it has double than the rest, which are five megapixels. And any sort of like errors will actually be displayed here. They usually happen when, for example, we're trying to negotiate with the camera a certain bit rate. That doesn't happen. It's sending us way more data. And then we're just going to let you know that, hey, you're actually running out of storage. And for example, you might not be able to connect as many cameras that as you would want. And that kind of wraps it up. I'm going to make another video showing you how to actually uh, connect the camera to it. In all fairness, if the camera's on the right firmware, does on with Profile S and it's in the same LAN, it's quite plug and play. But do remember there are like very big differences between this, right? So the command connector doesn't replace the Vercada cameras because they, it cannot bring the same simplicity and ease of use and service that would bring. However, if you are in a position where you cannot, for a reason, change your cameras to Vercada, this is the best way you can do to be part of the Vercada ecosystem. If you have any questions or comments, do drop them below and I'll come back to you as soon as I can.